And welcome to Share Truth Apply Scripture. I am Jordan Shambly, joined by Cedra Sarton. Hello. Hello. I'm here. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> I'm glad to be back. I'm glad yeah. that we could be here today. And yes. We don't have Wesley. That's okay. We have a guest. But real quick before we get started mm-hmm. there, uh, I'm going to remind everybody that if you want to know more about us, you can go to engagemagazine.net. That's engagemagazine.net where you can find all our other articles and podcasts and just go and explore. And you can also connect with us on social media. So. Yeah. Well, uh, and instead of Wesley, like you said, we have with us uh, Mr. Rick Robertson. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the program again. Yeah, my second time. It is your second time. Yeah. Thanks for having me back. Um, and allowed you back. Just to remind everybody <laughs> who's listening real quick, you work in what division of American Family Association? Uh, American Family Radio mm-hmm. in the production division of that, and then also on the air on our music network from okay. 10 a.m. till 2 p.m. But I produce uh, Joseph Parker's program, The Hour of Intercession, mm-hmm. and then do some of the 60-second and 30-second uh, uh, radio spots that you hear. Yeah, so you might be familiar with his voice, and uh, which is great. So we're glad to have you on the program again because you wrote a, an article that it first appeared on The Stand, which is mm-hmm. AFA's blog. You can go to afa.net slash The Stand and read this. Uh, but we reposted it on our website because we thought it was really good. Um, the, the title of the article is Close Encounters with Hot Button Topics. And of course, we're all familiar with those hot button topics yeah. these days. It seems like you can't have a normal conversation anymore. Yeah. Yeah. At least not in my experience. Nobody well, talks about the weather anymore. So <laughs> oh, last time we did. had you on, Rick, we kind of we, we kind of dove in into pleasing God and how to live a life that Mm -hmm. pleases God. Mm -hmm. So now, how do we do that when we're discussing some of these topics that come up? You know, when when you're with family, it's going to come up and then there's going to be at least one or two people who possibly do not agree Mm -hmm. with your stance on something. So like, how do we, how do we navigate that conversation in a way that is pleasing to God? Well, I've got more questions than I've got answers Mm -hmm. about that. (laughs) But, you know, I wrote the article because I was listening to a group of, group of guys talk about the coronavirus, and I'm uh, introvert, as you guys know, so I was sort of sitting back and listening, and I just thought, you know, how does the Lord want us to to dive into those conversations? And I think those thoughts also sprang from, uh, you see Facebook posts, there's there's one in particular that I remember, it's uh, a Christian lady that that I respect, Mm -hmm. and then... uh, a younger lady, younger Christian lady. Uh, one of them had um, a relative that was in the 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 uh, healthcare industry. So you know the pressures of yeah. someone that's uh, uh, dealing with the coronavirus and all the things, the, the pressures those uh, dear healthcare workers mm-hmm. have on them. And uh, the the conversation just uh, was was um, uh, pretty strong there. Yeah. You know, and I th- and so then I hear this long conversation about coronavirus, and I thought, you know, how how does how do we navigate those waters? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think a couple of things I believe the Lord showed me that, that there's a couple of scriptures that I mentioned, but in the article. But uh, we should we should go into those conversations guarded, yeah. You know, with a with a real carefulness because it is it is so easy just to flow with the direction of the, the whatever conversation, and if it's flowing in the wrong way, we don't want to go that way, obviously. Uh, but then uh, with all these hot button topics, mm-hmm. um, we have a wonderful opportunity as Christians Mm -hmm. and uh, so we go into it with a carefulness we go into it with um, a dependence on on the Holy Spirit to really guide us through those conversations Mm -hmm. Uh, it's it's not an easy thing to do but that's it's what everyone's talking about Mm -hmm. so if we can go into it um, led by the Holy Spirit and you know you you have to rewind Mm -hmm. how how does how does my day start does it start being plugged into God's Word and and having that um, time of meditation and communion with God so that I go into the conversations of the day uh, with this uh, being led, being being more aware of who God is. Mm -hmm. Now, I can't help but remember um, just a a theme all through the book of Proverbs is um, the idea of guarding your tongue Mm -hmm. and not letting it run away with you. I mean, uh, the Proverbs tells us um, that the fool is the one who kind of prattles on about just things, just talks and talks and talks and talks and that uh, there, there's a verse in Proverbs and I can't remember the re- 
reference exactly, but it's um, in a multitude of words, there is no lack of sin. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and so when you say you go into these conversations guarded and, and with a willingness to be quiet and listen a mm-hmm. bit more than we talk, I think that we will avoid um, overstepping our bounds in a way and, and saying things that aren't necessarily helpful. Right. Um, you know, and it, and it's so hard because these days, these conversations, they're, these aren't things that we can we feel like we can just be neutral on. Right. Um, because one, because we're told we can't be neutral <laughs> on, but two, because there's there's the political element. There's there's these the, the a lot of these issues are being used to manipulate people, and right. and all, and that's a reality that we have to wrestle with. And so our hand is forced, and we have to have a stance. Mm-hmm. Um, but when it comes to communicating what that is, I think, like you say, like going into these conversations aware, you know, of what people are saying, mm-hmm. what you might say, um, but also grounded in the Word of God and and led by the Holy Spirit. Th- these are things that don't come easily to us, um, but they should. And if they do, I think that when we do speak in our con- in these conversations, our words will actually be helpful and um, encouraging and uplifting and corrective in a, in a, in a graceful way. And I, I think sometimes um, we forget the power of silence. Mm-hmm. When you have a conversation that's going on, and there's one person that that uh, uh, never dives in there mm-hmm. with with the negativity, or so that 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 speaks very loudly too, mm-hmm. because it's you, you know there's there's pride there's pride that says, hey, I want to get in there and make an impression with with what I say, yeah. and there's pride of. Well, what if I don't say anything? But to be being led by the Lord, don't forget, you know, just the the fact that you are quiet about it. You don't you yeah. don't jump in there and 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 try to um, outdo the other person. Yeah. Well, and too, um, I'm I'm thinking about the conversations that I find myself in uh, frequently, <laughs> um, and how you can kind of tell sometimes, and, and sometimes I can tell myself as well. But you can tell when someone is getting worked up over yeah. something that's not necessarily, yeah. at least in that situation, that energy isn't directed in a constructive. <laughs> Right. Way. right. Um, and so, be, yeah, be, being the one who chooses to be, okay, I'm just going to, you know, not say anything right now, let them get it out of their system, and then come in and with, with a, either changing the subject or with an encouraging word or um, reminding them, you know, God is in control or, you know, right. something like that. Um, that seems to be a, a very worthwhile discipline to have. And maybe looking for the opportunity later to, to, to one-on-one to say, mm-hmm. hey, you know, I, I could see how you were disturbed about that, or I see yeah. what you said about that. I understand that, but uh, what about God's word and what it says about right. it? Or, yeah, and, and they may still not agree with you, but right. I think though, even people who do disagree with you, you'll find they have more respect for you and for and want to listen to you in the future if you approach them in that manner than than if you scream in, in their <laughs> face. Right. You know, you know, and, and later they may even if they sway and change their mind later down the road, you'll find they probably still don't want to talk to you about it. Mm-hmm. Right. If you're the one that came at them and, and yelled at them about, oh yeah, you know you're wrong and, and and things like that. So I, I had a I had a conversation. Well, like it, it was like one of those Facebook things. I rarely engage in because a lot of times you know those don't go very well yeah. <laughs> but I had a guy who was very angrily asking me questions because he knew my stance on uh, homosexuality and mm-hmm. what it says in scripture you know I, it's where I'm going with and he started ans- asking questions I could tell he was angry and I just I, I wanted to snap back a little bit mm-hmm. you know because he's mm-hmm. like snapping at me but I prayed about it and it was all God it was not me that was holding me back a little bit but I, I found that when I answered him, you know, with, you know, answered him calmly, mm-hmm. you know, and if I didn't know an answer, I would just say, I'm sorry, I don't have an answer for that. I will let me go. Let me go study my scriptures. Let me go talk to somebody and I'll yeah. come back with an answer if I have it. And I found that at the end, um, this particular person no longer was angry, but had just genuine questions. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if this person ever changed their mind mm-hmm. or went another direction, but I, I, I did ask them before, you know, and they said, well, I've bothered you enough and I said well let me ask you a question Mm -hmm. and he said yes and I was like how come you're no longer angry angry with me like and and things like that and he Mm -hmm. said uh because I can tell you don't hate me (laughs) yeah we never agreed with each other like we never we both we left we parted ways Mm -hmm. 
still on opposite mm-hmm. sides of this discussion, but you know, there was no hatred towards each other exactly. at the end. So, well, and, and I mean, that kind of interchange, you know, leaves room for an open door and a, and a conversation perhaps sometime in the future, because they know that you're a person who's not going to blow up in their face because, you know, you disagree with them, you know? Yeah. And, um, and because for a Christian, these things, then th- this, this is hard for me sometimes, but these things can't be personal, you know, because we are, we are, subjects of a king right and these these issues belong to him and our words should be his words so getting wrapped up in in feeling offended or feeling mm-hmm. defensive it, it, when we see those feelings rise up in ourselves what that should tell us is well maybe you're claiming this thing for your own maybe, right. maybe you are taking ownership of this argument when you really shouldn't yeah you've taken a, a position on mm-hmm. the throne there and said God I I am in control right. here and and it's me, my, and mine. Yeah. Right. Yeah, hold, we should hold her hand up. God, hold on, God. I got this. <laughs> yeah. No, we don't it's ever okay. do that. No, don't do that. <laughs> that does that. not end well for anyone. Um, but there's there's a there's a um, idea that you kind of explore in your in your article. Not to give too much away because I want people to go read it. Yeah. On our website, there's a link in the show notes. Um, but this idea of stewarding our words, sort of like we would steward our money or our time. Yeah, I I read an article by. Um, a Christian artist uh, probably 10 years ago Mm. and she was talking about writing songs and she says she was very picky about the 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 words she used Mm -hmm. and she called it language stewardship Mm. and I thought you know that that makes a lot of sense Mm -hmm. Uh, God has given us words to speak and in her case words to write uh, for songs and she said doing it in with um, with God in mind. In other words, this is who I'm writing this for. She didn't put it exactly that way, but uh, we could say we're speaking these words where God has given us so many words and and we need to be good stewards Mm -hmm. of those words. So just uh, uh, all these words that come tumbling out of our mouth and they can come out so quickly. and, And I've been a part of so many conversations where, you know, you have the quick conversation in the hall and you walk away and you think, Boy, I could have handled that a lot better. Oh, I, could yeah. have, I could have, I could have been more careful mm-hmm. with my words. So just that whole stewardship idea. Mm-hmm. It's the idea too of um, this is. I, I'm reading the Proverbs. I think I've referenced the Book of Proverbs in the past three episodes of this uh, of this uh, program. Um, but uh, there's an idea in Proverbs as well is that that your tongue is not a your your tongue is something that you have to tame. Your tongue is something yeah. that you have to really control because it is a it can be a tool for w- wickedness. It's not neutral where right. you say, "Okay, tongue, go this way or this." No, it 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 mm-hmm. has this uh, natural bend toward evil. Yeah, and so what we have to do as Christians, we have to we make <laughs> we have to make sure that our our tongue is under control, and we have to really be intentional about that. I think yeah. before you say anything, I mean. A lot of people have this practice, and I think it's really good, but to pause, you know, for a split second before you say something. And for a Christian, we need to ask ourselves, what I'm about to say, this sentence, this word, is Jesus the king of it? Right. Or am I? I think a good question that um, I've come across is, who is your audience? Is your audience Mm. simply for amens from people who already agree with you? (laughs) Or are you actually trying to change people? Mm Mm-hmm. Like, are you actually trying to draw people in and and change them and change their opinion on something because you know that that thing, what they believe in, is harmful to them? Is that is your Mm. goal to benefit them because you know how harmful their beliefs are to them? Or or is it just simply so you can get someone to comment on your post and say, Amen, brother. You know, (laughs) if that's that's your only goal, then I guess... uh, are you, who are you benefiting there? Yeah. You know, I've never seen anger and compassion, you know, presented in the same in the same exchange, you know. Mm-hmm. I've never seen someone be angry and compassionate at the same time. Yeah. And I, I don't think you can be. Um and so what you're saying is exactly true. Like what is your motive when you when you're entering into these conversations? Are you like, "Oh, I've got I've got just the right thing to say and I'm going to hit a home run with this and I'm just going to mm-hmm. show them and then my buddy back here is going to be like, "Oh, you, you know, you you got them <laughs> right. at that, you know." Or do you actually have compassion on someone who has a harmful belief? Um and and you want to, you know, in a in a loving and graceful way 
uh, draw them back from that. And and if the answer to that is no, it's probably best to just not say yeah. anything, honestly. Now, is what do you guys think about uh, social media and mm. these conversations? Is that a is that always a healthy place to go, or what? What are your? What are, I'm sure y'all discussed this before. <laughs> you're looking We've had lots it. of you're looking at me. I'm going to say no. I'm yeah. going to say generally, in most cases, it can be helpful in mm-hmm. that you reach a larger number of people with a message. Mm-hmm. But personally, when I see people's like conversations, yeah. when anybody out there can just post something, which I guess it's your right to do. Most of the time, it's not very helpful. Mm-hmm. It it's just it, it it's just a place where people can get on there and argue and yeah, it, it can be. It can be. It can be. Mm-hmm. It can be very helpful. But I, I'm going to say with anything that has humans involved in it, <laughs> it's, it's a it's a big old mess. Well, I mean, <laughs> as a person who used to actually engage in and incite all of those you know social media arguments myself back in my Far more, you know, younger years. Yeah, I totally would have um, watched you if we'd been <laughs> friends back then. Um, I, I have to say that as a general rule, uh, uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, and whatever else you have, is just not a good place to 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 do the to to engage in those kinds of arguments. I mean, if it's if if you're if you're messaging someone back and forth, just you two, right, right, that's different. Yeah. But the thing about you know posting on social media is. Um, first of all, if you read someone else's post, you're not you're not engaging with that the person. Mm-hmm. You're engaging with an edited version of themselves that they thought this is okay for me to present to the whole world. Right. So it's not a genuine conversation. There's no such thing on social media. Mm-hmm. It's just two fake versions of your of yourself and someone else yeah. having a fake conversation. Now that's not all the time. I'm not saying this all the time, and it's certainly better when you're just having a one-on-one like email or uh, instant message back and forth. But if 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 you're basically you know setting up two little soapboxes for you to stand on and have a debate in a public setting that is social media, it's not going to be a genuine conversation, mm-hmm. and it's really not going to be helpful for many people. <laughs> That's why I just post memes. There you go. Memes. Just post memes. <laughs> Like I think this is going to make everybody laugh. And that's what I post, and <laughs> yeah. that's it. Because I I know that if I post, you know, certain things, that it's mm-hmm. it's going to be it's going to be no good. Right. No good. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I and I and that being said, I have seen you know people who are who have a have a good grip on you know their words, and they understand you know that they they're not just trying to get people angry. Um, I've seen people have fruitful conversations mm-hmm. on Facebook, and I mean, it's it's the exception to the rule, but it's been it's been done, and it can be done. But just as a general rule, I would say, I personally avoid those situations yeah. because they're not helpful for me, at least. I, I, I come I come away from those kinds of discussions, you know, my heart racing, and like right. I am just just worked up and the rest of my day is just kind of ruined by this one encounter, you know, that right. didn't even actually happen. It was just this <laughs> little fake thing that happened on the internet. So it's not very helpful. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I would say. That's what I would say. Um, but yeah, I think with uh, the, yeah, it's about seven minutes we have left. Um, maybe we can talk about a little bit about what our priorities should be um, in conversations. Cause we, we've talked a little bit about like, Things that we should avoid, things that we should, you know, um, uh, things that we should uh, discipline ourselves to, you know, weed out of our words and, you know, control our, our tongue. But what what are things that we should be willing to take uh, hard stances on and to vocalize? Um, w- and and that's something that I, I trip up on a lot mm-hmm. uh, because I I tend to. I tend to have the the you know I, I tend to just avoid <laughs> um, right. arguments a right. lot, it's, it, it, whether it's on the, on the internet or face to face. I just tend to be like, you know what? They can believe what they want to believe. I'm going to believe what I want to believe. We can agree to disagree on these things. But sometimes there's issues where we can't we can't really do that, you know. Um, and while we engage with them in in in, in uh, a graceful way. Um, and we, we certainly don't, you know, get into a shouting match, hopefully. Um, there are some things that 
I think are uh, important for Christians to speak out on. Number one, I would think, uh, you know, the the things like uh, the pro life issue. Mm-hmm. Right. I think that um, that has been something that is so uh, misunderstood it, it, by and large in our society um, and misrepresented in the media. People don't know what it is. I, yeah. I think I would like to think that. Um, so I think those are good opportunities to bring the truth to bear in a subject that really actually ha- is a life and death situation. Right, right. Um, so yeah. that's one That's one thing. Can you all think that's, of That's the main one that I'd point to. Yeah. When I'm talking about a, a, you know, a discussion where like someone thinks that you have the right to murder somebody yeah. or not. I don't really think there's a place there for you to to just say, well, I, I guess we'll agree to disagree. No, yeah. That's mm-hmm. one area I really cannot um, – because, I mean, like I said, we're discussing mm-hmm. the murder of innocent children. So, mm-hmm. and if, you know, there are people out there who won't speak up for them, I, I, I have to. Yeah, yeah. Well, you think of people, too, that are involved in the homosexual lifestyle mm-hmm. or the transgender, uh, the transgender movement. You know, mm-hmm. they're destroying their lives. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we could easily take a step back and say, Okay, well, you've decided to do that, and and I don't agree with you, but uh, to to ask the Lord to give you opportunities to share truth to mm-hmm. them, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, even if it means um, them walking away from the relationship, and right. and who knows what the Lord's going to do five years from now, right. or two years from now, they're they're thinking about these things that you said to them, or the Lord puts someone else in their path mm-hmm. who who shares truth with them. Yeah. So, you know, all of these are, are just really tough issues. I was talking to a young man um, on Sunday, and he's 19 years old. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't believe he's a Christian. I think he would say he's a Christian, but I, I, don't, I don't think he's a Christian. Mm-hmm. And he was talking, I was asking him how school was going. He's going to this school that where you, he's learning coding right, and, right. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and other things relating to uh, web design and things like that. And uh, I, I was sort of embarrassed. He said, um, he used the term microaggression. He said, there, he's <laughs> learning about that. And, and, so, and I thought, okay, how, how does, what is that? Mm. I, I, I just don't know anything about that. That's related to computers and I don't understand that. <laughs> then he explained it to, he, he brought up the mm. definition on his uh, on his computer and it, I mean, on his uh, phone mm-hmm. and it connected to the crit- critical race theory. Now right. you can define microaggression. Yeah. I don't really, I can't do that. It's and, just and part of you wants to yeah. go, what does that have to do <laughs> right. with computer coding and things like that? Like, what is that? What, how is that benefiting yeah. any of that? <laughs> well, uh, as far as I understand it, microaggression would be something that you, you it can be in subconsciously enter in a conversation mm-hmm. where supposedly you've been conditioned to think a certain way, but that is offensive to the person you're talking to. Right. And it kind of sh- shows through your conversation a little bit and, you know, causes them to be offended. I wish that, I'd have talked to you before <laughs> talking to him. I could, I could have really impressed yeah, him. It's like a microscopic aggression. And you would think that that would be a microscopic yes. issue, but it okay. isn't apparently. No, it's not. Yeah. It's so, so he's, uh, this, he's, his, um, School, his teacher yeah. has them reading this book that is relating to critical race theory and some mm-hmm. really tough things there. Yeah, and uh, so I I didn't handle it perfectly, <laughs> but I did understanding that he might be lost. Mm-hmm. Uh, I talked about the the deeper root there mm-hmm. being sin, yeah. and the hope we have in Christ. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, I, I would get a, maybe a, a D plus on the way I handled that. But, but I, I mm. did have, by God's grace, have a mindset of, okay, you know, my, my end goal there was to point him toward Christ. Mm-hmm. So even something like critical race theory, there, the Lord will give you a road to go down that would lead you to him. So yeah. I think wow. just having that mm-hmm. uh, sensitivity. Yeah. Yeah, and being, um, I think, thoroughly uh, drenched in Scripture and, yeah. and and practiced in prayer, I think that is uh, vital for that kind of discussion. Um, uh, there's something that you, you included a, uh, a Bible verse in your article as well, and I just wanted to read it. Um, it's Psalm 1914. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Um, and I think that is 
or should be the Christian's top priority Mm -hmm. in every conversation. Not that, you know, Lord, let my words convince them or Lord, let me win this argument or, Mm -hmm. you know, Lord, let me, you know, show, you know, (laughs) uh, the, the, the people who disagree with you and your word, let me show them, you know, how it is, yeah. but well, in Galatians yeah. two twenty it says it's not I who live, but Christ exactly. lives in me. Yeah. Yes. So you know, in everything that we do, if we put on the name of Christ, then we are representing Him. So yeah. that's it's important to remember that in all in the way you address anything. Yeah. yeah. And and so when we have our, these conversations, um, we have to ask ourselves: Is Christ shining through me right now? Are the words in my mouth? Uh, pleasing and acceptable in God's sight. Um, And I think that we will find that that question will keep us from saying a lot of things that we would otherwise say. Yeah. Um, And that's just, that's just um, our natural bent is to, is to try to one up someone or, um, or we have this urgency that we think this argument is just really important and I need to Mm -hmm. win it by any means necessary, but that is not always true. Um, What's most important is that our words be pleasing to God. And that's, you know, the, the words that we say are intertwined with the meditation of our hearts. Yeah. You know, are we, are we spending time in God's word? Mm. Are we feeding on spiritual things? Are we thinking on things that are, are, are godly? And so you have that that type of heart, mm. and from that heart comes words yeah. that uh, that are honoring to God, that are pleasing to God by God's grace. I mean, it, we wouldn't be thinking about those things if He had not stirred our hearts mm. and and drawn us to Him. Yeah. But uh, now that He has to to feed on that, to feed on the the wonders of His Word, and to 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 saturate our minds with that. Um, and that that's easier said than done. It you is. know, I don't feel like I've, I've <laughs> succeeded at that. Yeah. But uh, to 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 think on those godly things, and then to have that perspective going uh, when you go online or when you mm-hmm. are in conversations with the guy at Walmart. Right. Uh, godly things will come out. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being on our program today. It was an honor. I, yeah. I appreciate it. We'll have you on again. Uh, and uh, guys, you can read this article on EngageMagazine.net. The link is going to be in the show notes of this episode. Um, and uh, until next week, guys, continue to share truth and apply scripture.